When the original X3 launched in 2003, it was one of the first compact premium SUVs to hit UK roads. And since then, it seems like pretty much every manufacturer has released their take on the form factor. This third generation model originally came out in 2017 and it's been mildly updated since throughout the years. As a result, this version right here is lighter and much more efficient than it ever was before, making it a very strong offering in this class. Key rivals include the Audi Q5, Land Rover Discovery Sport and the Volvo XC60. The X3 starts from around £41,500 for entry-level X-Line models, though it climbs higher to around £61,000 for M versions. It can only be had with four-wheel drive and there's no manual gearbox option available. You either have to choose between six or eight speed automatic. The X3's front end exudes a robust and sporty look. I like the dynamic creases on the bonnet, a design cue inspired by the much larger X5. I like the design of the kidney grille as well in that gloss black exterior trim housed between slim headlights. The headlights are adaptive LED as standard, meaning you can have them on full beam without dazzling any other drivers. But if you do a lot of nighttime driving, and consider upgrading to the BMW laser lights as these will improve overall nighttime visibility. At the side, we can check out the alloy wheels, which range from 19 to 21 inches in size. We have 20 inch alloys with this uh, M Sport trim with a nice midnight grey design. At the side, as standard, you also get auto dimming and electrically folding door mirrors that tilt downwards when reversing to help you see the curb and roof rails adding to that rugged feel. We've just decided to opt for the standard Alpine white body colour here, but if this is not for you, there are some metallic finishes to choose from. Plus, the very popular Skyscraper Grey is now available with the X3. One advantage of the X3 over key rivals is that even though it shares the same dimensions as its predecessor, it's actually 55 kilograms lighter. And what that means is it just feels more agile on the road than key rivals like the Jaguar F-Pace and the Volvo XC60. So if you're looking for a practical and spacious family car, that doesn't feel lumbering when you're winding down country roads or driving through town, then this is worth a look. The rear end adopts a much more muscular stance than elsewhere around the exterior design. Especially love the dramatic tail lights and the way that they breach onto that tailgate, which by the way is automatically operated as standard. The X3 boasts a boot capacity of 550 litres, the same as the Mercedes GLC. Nice wide square shape to the boot, making it incredibly easy to load even the most awkwardly shaped and sized items into the back. Swallows up around eight carry-on suitcases or six to seven larger adult suitcases. And there's a good amount of underfloor storage towards the back end of the boot. Plenty of space there for the maintenance kit and your dog walking bits. With this particular model, you get a couple of hooks dotted around to attach objects that like to roll around. You get lights, making it easier to see what you do during the night. You get this tonneau cover as well, which feels fairly robust. You could put some stuff on top of that if you really need to. And you are able to fold down the rear seat from here if you lean over that cover, and that will extend boot capacity to in excess of 1,500 litres. You'll easily be able to fit a couple of adult bikes in here if you take the wheel off, you know, buggies, golf club skis, you can just now easily slide through into the rear cabin space. Okay guys, there's around six different powertrains available with the X3. I'm not gonna dive into them all here, but I'll talk about the one we have under the bonnet and that's the xDrive 20D option. That's powered by a two liter mild hybrid diesel unit generating 190 horsepower for a pretty rapid zero to 62 time of 7.9 seconds. Indeed, performance is punchy for a vehicle of this size, especially from a diesel engine. Miles per gallon is impressive. Uh, BMW quotes that you'll achieve around 47.9 miles per gallon on the combined cycle. CO2 emissions, though, are fairly high, around 156 grams per kilometre. That places it in one of the top benefiting kind or company car tax bands for 2022 to 2023. So if you would like to take advantage of some more promising tax savings, if you are after your new business car, then do consider one of the high hybrid xDrive 30e options. Um, those reduce CO2 output to around just 56 grams per kilometer. You also benefit from up to 20 miles of all electric range, depending on your driving situation. Comes as no surprise, but visibility is absolutely exceptional. I've got a fantastic view of the road ahead, a quite commanding view, actually. Uh, my view behind me is brilliant, thanks to wide side uh, mirrors, which have blind spot monitoring integrated onto them. 
We're getting up to speed now on this dual carriageway, so it's a good time to talk about noise. Now, there is some road noise, unfortunately, seeping into the cabin um, due to those large 20-inch alloy wheels that we got for this particular model. Um, it could be better soundproofed as a result. Uh, I'm hearing a lot of those sounds reverberate around the interior. Thankfully, wind noise. I'm not hearing too much of that. No bellowing from the windows or the mirrors, which is, which is great to see. Um, around town, though, the X3 is incredibly quiet. As standard, guys, you get non-adjustable suspension. This does a nice job at absorbing impacts around town, light undulations um, on city streets. Though if you opt for an M Sport model, that firms up the ride quality quite significantly, so you will notice the impact of those undulations reverberate throughout the cabin. I said earlier that the X3 feels agile despite its size, and that is certainly the case. It maintains its body control extremely nicely through tight corners and bends. Though it's worth noting if you go with one of the high hybrid variants due to the heavier battery packs under the boot floor it does feel a little bit heavier and it does impact the driving experience. The X3 offers a top class premium feel throughout the cabin regardless of which trim level you choose and that's thanks to a great amount of material variety from the soft touch plastics, the textured effect running across the dashboard and a luxurious lever adorning the steering wheel and seats. The sports seats are exceptionally comfortable and you get these prominent side bolsters that hold you in place well when winding around a country road or navigating through a tight corner. Manual adjustment is what you have to play with here. Fortunately, no electric adjustment with this particular M Sport model. Though you can pump yourself up really high. This is actually the highest point. That's giving me a very lofty view of the road ahead, straight over that bonnet. I feel like I can, re can really aim the car down the road. But if you prefer a lower seating position, that's also accommodated for. Yeah, a good amount of adjustment here to find that perfect position for you. The steering wheel can be adjusted for reach and rake like so, very easy to find that comfortable position. And I'm just so impressed by how wide this interior is. You can stretch out, find a really nice and relaxed position. The high roof line means you're nowhere near the top there, so headroom isn't an issue. It's just a really nice place to be. As standard, the seats are upholstered in this black Vanaska leather with grey stitching. Nice effect, though if you do want something a bit more extravagant, there are other upholstery options to dive into. If you'd like to do that, get in touch with our team via the link in the description below. Behind the steering wheel, you get a 12.3 inch driver display. Very sharp, it's easy to read while on the go. And it shows key information like your speed, uh, your fuel economy figures, and you can have navigation instruction sharp on there as well. This is complemented by a large 12.3 inch central display, a little bit larger than in other BMW models, and that's installed with the previous generation BMW iDrive system. Uh, don't let that previous generation turn put you off though, it is an exceptional infotainment setup. It's sharp, it's easy to navigate, it's intuitive, uh, it's got all the usual gubbins as well, DAB radio plus wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto for this particular model. It's just a really good system. Working our way down the dash then, always nice to see physical buttons for the climate controls, which have been reduced slightly with newer iX and electrified BMW models, so it's nice to see them here with the X3, like the chrome surrounding the air vents as well. You also get physical buttons for some media. Down below, we've got a nice compartment here, perfect for your smartphone. You can have a wireless smartphone charging pad here, accompanied by a USB port, and you can close that and shut that as you like. A couple of cup holders as well, nice size on those, easily fit a bulky bottle. And here's the uh, driver compartment here. So you've got my um, eight speed automatic uh, gear shift and you've got your rotary dial, which you can use for navigating the display while on the go. It's my recommended way of using that display because you can just rest your arm like so, very comfortably glide through those options when driving from A to B. It's a fantastically well-optimized setup. Cubby hole time, let's open up the central compartment. Goes down pretty far, plenty of space there for your snacks and other bits and bobs. You've also got a USB-C port in there as well. Disappointed with the size of the glove box, considering the size of the interior here. I mean, there's not enough room for really anything in there, but we did manage to, to shove some headphones in, so if that's emblematic of something. There we go. But I'm impressed by the size of the door bins. Uh, easily enough room for a 500ml bottle and anything that you need easy access to. I love the space on offer in the back of the X3. It's comfortable, practical, and spacious enough for a growing family. Headroom's very good, so I'm 5'8 and I'm absolutely miles away from the top of the roof line in there. Even passengers who are 6'4 over will not have any issues. Legroom, I have an exact figure for you, 925 millimeters. I could stretch out all the way. In fact, I feel like I'm sitting in my lounge right now, very, very comfortable. Knee room as well is good, so I can get in a really nice relaxed position and my knees don't come up too high. 
If there's no middle passenger, you can fold this bit down and that will ward quite dramatically it seems, and that will ward you with a couple of cup holders which open rather dramatically. And it's also a makeshift armrest as well. You also get 40-20-40 folding seats as standard and that allows you to fold down the middle seat independently to then slide objects through into the rear cabin space. If I'm being particularly nitpicky is that the doors don't open particularly wide as you can see around 60 degrees or so. That could make it a bit tricky to load bulky kid seats into the back but once you've managed to pivot one of those in you can strap them to the Isofix fittings on either rear seat and they're the kind of coverings where you just kind of push it in, the coverings go up and you can lock the seat in place. I'm a bit disappointed that we don't have pouches on the back of the front seat, not even some netting that you get with some other BMW models, though to make up for this the door bins are nice and spacious, plenty of room there for a 500ml bottle and other bits and bobs like some snacks and you get a air conditioning cluster where you can adjust the air intensity as well as the temperature, below that you get a couple of USB-C sockets as well. Sadly there's no 7 seater option available with the X3 so if you manage to squeeze 3 adults into the back what is that going to be like for the unlucky one? in the middle. Let's slide across and take a look. So I mean I'm surprised to say that comfort isn't too bad, I mean you get a fair amount of support with that seat behind me though the plastic from the cup holders is digging into my back somewhat. The issue of course comes with the large central tunnel which the middle passenger will have to straddle and they'll be encroaching on the personal space of the other passengers. So guys, what are my thoughts on the X3? Well, if you're looking for an SUV that offers exceptional levels of comfort, a brilliant infotainment system, excellent visibility, sharp handling and an engaging drive and plenty of boot space, well, this is still one of the best offerings in its segment. Some downsides for me though are that the M Sport suspension will feel a bit too firm for some, so it is worth taking it for a test drive to see if it suits you. And also some of the more desirable offerings are locked behind higher spec optional packages, which means it can get quite pricey to spec your ideal X3. If you need a hand finding your perfect X3 guys and just get in touch with our team via the number in the banner below, we'll be happy to explore your options further, um, see which engine and trim combination best suits you and we can get the ball rolling on delivery for you. If you'd like to browse the latest offers that we have available on the X3 just click the link in the description below and click the pop-up banner above to check out more reviews of the latest BMW models. If you enjoyed this one guys give it a thumbs up also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and there's a notification bell down there if you haven't clicked it please do so because then you'll get notified when the next in-depth review goes live on the channel. But that's it thanks for watching take care safe driving.